Back on the story, I wanted us to talk about the beginning, the beginning. Uh, so, I was, I was in a place where I was trying to write children's books and I wanted someone to help me sell them. So, I posted an advert in Arisha Mailing looking for someone who can help me sell and you contacted me and then you bought like like 10, 20 copies for... for exactly, and I came to your office that time you were working at Tanzania Investment, Investment Bank it was because I was running a like a after school program in Laroi and I was looking for material and I remember seeing your, your advert for children's books and we thought you were just selling someone else's books but you had written these books. I put another advert looking for someone to help me sell the books. Exactly. And then you contacted me again. I needed something to do so I was like, okay. I can also just sell books. <laughs> we weren't friends at that time. Like we were just, it was just like a business yeah. transaction. Uh, you yeah. were selling books, you got someone to do it. I just left and I continued my thing. And then I think it was 2016 at Vagina Monologues. Like, so I was sitting next to you. I did not know you. This like Sungi, by that time I already have her number. I would be communicating about how many books I'm selling and whatnot, but I really don't know how she doesn't know me. We're just two people in Arusha trying to get by. At this time, we're still in TIB. Yeah. We were sitting on the same bench or like the same aisle, right next to each other, the entire time. Yes. Exactly. And then it was a raffle ticket moment. And I think it was you who was like, yeah. you didn't know whether your number was a seven or a one or something yes, like this. Yes, I, I yeah, so you wanted to cl- a clar- a clarification. <laughs> and then you just turned into me and you're like, excuse me, this is a one or seven. And we were really yeah. happy. For me, I was really happy because I was there alone. I was too. But I was really happy because we were talking. I don't remember the conversation. That same night, we didn't want to go home. So we went out party, danced our heads off. I just didn't want to go back home that day and I just remember the music being really good and then you were like yeah you can just just come stay over right (laughs) so I slept over at your place and then we got to talking about like what we're doing and art and you told me that you know you're you work at TIB but your passion is in visual art and you want to be like you're thinking about a get out plan and then I remember you were, I think you were just really excited to have someone around. So you were like, you know, you can come stay with me. Do you remember this? I know, I just, like last night, uh, I mean, that was a Saturday, remember? Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking, 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 I was So I move in, I'm like, I go and get my stuff and I just bombard you with my life in this tiny space. I think it can have two people, which we did later on. I think we were cohabitating later on. Yeah. Is it cohabitating or cohabiting? <laughs> <laughs> cohabiting. But at that time, I felt like we had a good time. Everything up until I moved in were just all positive things. We were also talking about places to go because we were like, what's there to do in Arusha? What do people do on weekends? And we're just trying to figure things out. So anyways, I come in and after day three, I could see in your face (laughs) that you're like, this person needs to leave me alone (laughs) because we were in each other's spaces, kabisa, you know? Yeah, because yeah, because the house was still empty. By the way, just a, like a fun fact, Sungi is a, is such a great craftswoman. You made your sofa, you made your shelves, you made your like a storage cabinet thingy with the wheels. I mean, it's amazing. But we hadn't had that yet. And I, but I remember the good thing is that we had DSTV. We had your TV. Your mom had <laughs> had given you her TV. All of it was for borrowing. So like. We had a fridge, but we knew your mom was going to get it back. Uh, we had a TV. <laughs> we knew that's that also short-lived. And so we were watching yeah. cooking shows. I remember we were just watching cooking shows going, <laughs> when are we ever going to eat such food? But anyways, after day three, I, I could tell this was too soon. Like, we moved in too soon. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like the beginning of a loveless marriage. 
And so I I said, okay, maybe I should move out. So so I, I, but I had that discussion. I don't know if you remember. Was I passive aggressive or did I actually like entangle the the agenda and be like, I need to give you space. I think we were more passive aggressive, but we could read, read each other's minds. Yeah, exactly. We were passive aggressive. It's true. You wanted your time alone, and and the thing about Sung is that she will not hesitate to tell you. Like, can you please just know? I remember when you started painting, and I was just obsessed with coming over. Sometimes I'll just show up in your painting, and you you wouldn't even open the door. You're like, look here, no, not today. Just go back where you came from. Back I finished. But the annoying artist was really about like moving around town, talking to people, and then setting up things and stuff. I would just pass by. Whereas for you, you really needed like your quiet time. But I appreciate it. It taught me something. It's not you weren't hostile or anything. You were just like no, 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 no. Not like just please. We do this Friday for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's the story. Yeah, that is the story. But then we just became the best of friends. So I think well, the the good thing was the me moving out. I started teaching at a school um, in Moshono, which I found out was not registered, and the guy was a con artist, and I was there for like two months. One month paid, one month unpaid, and it was a huge fight. And it was good. It was a good experience. But what I think what brought us close at that time was we would work on our jobs because you're still at TIB and we, we were just like um, catching up on work every day and uh, pushing each other to, to do those uh, artistic endeavors on the side. And so I think you introduced me to going out and not like going out partying, but yes. you would be like, Let's just drive. And I remember we drove to Old Oh my god, Old is a mountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we ate meat. We were stopped by the traffic and we told them we were going to Old Onesambo to eat meat. And they were like, you don't come back here without meat. And we bought them meat. And that was really refreshing because then stressing out about a lot of things made me have something to look forward to. And I think that's where the friendship started because, you know, we could just talk forever about things about what we want to do about what pisses us off about what we're insecure about or about what we we want to achieve Baka, the traffic police if i would drive without you like if i was on my way to you and they stopped me and i wasn't with you they would be like where's your sister I yeah i think this is also where yeah. people started thinking like you are my yes. girlfriend <laughs> let's talk more about like, how you found the job and then how you started like, slowly transitioning to art um, I started as an intern in 2014. I remember I graduated from uni in 2013 and then I started a business with my sister trying to sell art mm-hmm. and she was trying to sell clothes because she was in fashion and design. But like we didn't know what we were doing for sure. <laughs> yeah. We closed down after like a few months. Yeah. What was the biggest problem there? A lot of things were involved. Yeah. My sister had just had a baby yeah. and she was happily involved in the business. Mm-hmm. The strategy was bad, the location was bad, rent was extremely expensive. Right. Yeah, so I was jobless for a while, then I got the internship and then eventually got employed. Yeah, then I, I was like, this is just temporary. Um, I'll, I'll just like get back into art. I just tried painting a little bit, but not completely. Yeah. So I was just like, I'm gonna eat one day, I'm just gonna get into art one day, I'm just gonna save a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that never happened. Mm-hmm. It just got deeper into lots with the bed, and I, I couldn't take it after a while. I was just like, going to work was dying a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then I just brought a, a resignation letter. I didn't know how I was going to. called um, Sekito Emmanuel. He had sold something from Sachi. Yes. Yeah, we were like, 
just let's just give it a try. What, what are you gonna lose? You know, if they don't buy, they don't buy. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have you have the annoying artist festival. Yep. Around the same time, and we came up with an arrangement where you you help me sell and you get fifty percent. And it was like the first uh, festival. Yeah, we we you painted this portrait, um, and then you came up with the idea of. A uh, silent, yeah, exactly a silent auction. A sealed, it was sealed, wasn't it? Even like yes, s- yes, yeah. And I remember it was you. So you were you were displaying your art, but there was a Cameroonian um, artist, um, this really cool girl yeah. called Ethel Tawe. I remember you sold, and you had a higher estimate than what you got, right? Yes. Yes. I had. Yeah, it was good money also. Like on the subject of expectation, I don't think I what I have always liked about you is that you you never lowered your value on your art, like your price on it. And and you wouldn't you are not going to budge. You would it's like it's okay. If it's not bought, it's not bought. But we had done a lot of shows before that where you you exhibited your work, right? Or was that the first one? No. That was the first one. Then after, I remember I had to do Serengeti, so I made three paint, three portraits. Ah yes. Oh, in black and white. And exactly, and I think we sold all of them, right? Did. I remember. So it was. I think it was my first visual art exhibition, and I had talked to a guy called Freddie. and he had this. Uh, he's a lawyer, and he had this really nice space and office. In Haile Selassie here in Arusha, and I, I think we were also brainstorming about coming together and bringing Arusha. Like I, I feel like there's a lot of people who have a lot of ideas for Arusha because it's very quiet. Yeah, talking to Freddie, he allowed me to use his space, and then that was my first visual art exhibition. And then we kept doing my shows, and we would I would just have your paintings be sold because yeah. because immediately like from the first. Uh, exhibition that I did at Haile Selassie, people were in love. And I remember we we started then our hustling phase. I started selling McHugh's clothes. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And with thrifty. Like, thrifty. It was called Thrifty. I had a logo and everything it was black and yellow and I printed it from Rich. Canva. Yeah, exactly. We were like discovering Canva and we would just be on Canva all the time making our business cards. <laughs> and so there was a farmer, like in Arusha, there's a farmer's market. So there's there's two of them, and, and the one in Usa River allowed me to, to come and sell used clothes. And yeah, we would just hang out in this farmer's market, and whatever we got, we would always take a little bit for food. We were so obsessed with food. Yes, <laughs> Exactly. So we would just finish, we would just finish this farmer's market, or whatever hustle, or whatever we were doing. And it, I mean, I remember you were selling um, herbs, right? You were selling like coriander. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At the farmer's market, so you sell coriander and rosemary and... And rosemary and all these herbs. I think you sold potted yeah. plants as well. And um, sometimes we'd be so pissed at each other, but I'm just like, okay, fine. I'm going to come and help you because, of course, you, you were helping me a lot. Yes. It was really good and we went and celebrated. We celebrated everything. We just had to put an excuse. We, we had to have a, a, an excuse to eat food. Uh, and if it, it could be something so small, we'll just go for a cake somewhere or we'll go for nyama somewhere and we'll just keep on talking. But but at this time you, you had now quit TIB. Uh, yeah, I'll go to hotels and see if they can put up my work. I went to New Arusha, I remember. Yeah. Um, some of the few that accepted were New Arusha, Arusha Coffee Food and, and Mount Merrigan Lunch. But then, yeah, I just kept on trying
the like the something and maybe I make cells. Mm-hmm. So that was just like the end, like I lost a bit of hope. I remember the same night I I wrote something. Mm-hmm. I, I wrote something. I think I shared it to you once, and you're like, ah, I posted, but I was like, no, no, I don't think I wrote it. Aha, uh-huh. yes. Yes. So I just I just wrote everything that was happening, how my toilet paper was running out, and like, goodness. <laughs> oh my god. I was surviving on bread, and, and and my sister had lent me money, mm-hmm. and I couldn't pay her back, and she was pregnant. <laughs> At least we can laugh about it now. But I, yeah, that's I terrible. Uh huh. Yeah, but I remember how I was frightened to write this down because I thought like I'm going to a depression and I would never like be able to recover from it. Yeah, I actually laughed after 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 writing it out and reading it out loud. I laughed and I just it's just like this is life. <laughs> I don't know whether you had adopted that attitude after that because. I would then overthink things, right? I would always panic and I don't know. I would just always panic and think about the worst things happening when I was down. And you were just like, what is the crying going to help you? You know, and you, of course you weren't saying it in a, in a hostile way. You were, you were just trying to be practical with me. Like, okay, find a solution. It sunk into me that time when you were like, it's not going to help us sitting here worrying. And I, I think like you had very good mental block like at the right time because you are you aren't trying to let me scare you into doing something crazy or but i wanted to tell a story of like how then you started thinking about applying to galleries at outside arusha saying you know what every day i'm just going to send an email to xyz worst thing that can happen is 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 that they don't they say no and that's fine i figured out that i'm not uh, eight to five job anymore. Right. I have more freedoms than I think. Mm-hmm. So I've always wanted to travel. Do you remember when you used to talk about like going traveling to India and things like that? Oh my this? gosh, we had the biggest dreams when we were the brokers. We were like, you know what? If we save enough, we can go to Madagascar. Hapo, we do not have this idea. We were big dreamers. But yeah, you're right. We really wanted to travel. So, like, if I can't go to another continent, <laughs> I can take a chance and go to Nairobi. It's like I don't have to do the big, big, big mm-hmm, version mm-hmm. of that. I can just do what I, what I can. So, you're right. I, I made myself send an email at me. If, if I didn't do it at mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. that's no, like, nothing is going to change. But if I did send something, mm-hmm. The probability of something changing was 50 50. You either get a no, mm-hmm. and you have nothing to lose with that, or you could get a yes. The least I could do is just spend something random and wait and see. Mm-hmm. So I remember getting into a pop up market in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. It's one of the first things that I went to, and I didn't have money for, for the space or for my transport. So I remember packing my bag with a as little as I, as I kept for the road. <laughs> and you were the one who knew that I wasn't going, like, in planning. Yeah, but my mom was just like, I should just go to this thing. I kept telling her that after this, I'm going to this and this. I don't know if she didn't believe me. You say that Swift Nines, right? Yeah, yeah. God bless Swift. He has hosted so many people. <laughs> he's a treasure. Oh, my God. I know. He's, he's amazing. Awesome. Is he thinking, what are all these Tanzanian artists just coming to crash out my place? Like, what's their problem? <laughs> but I was no longer sad. Because, you know, in the beginning, we had just... We, it just felt like we had already formed this kind of force in Arusha. And, and of course, in the back of my mind, I knew you wanted more. And we all wanted more for each other. But it just felt like we were... Yeah, we were a good team. Yeah, I could call on you for things. And I had felt comfortable... Um, around you, you know, I could just completely, complete. I was not holding back 100%, like if I wanted to, yeah. and I think it's because we had such similar stories. When you were starting to mention going away, it kind of hurt. I was just like, I have to start over again with someone if she leaves, and I just felt complete, you know. Of course, it was like a, a selfish um, thought, but it was coming from a good place, but it's just like, I just wanted you around. Yeah. 
we did christmas fair and there was this kenyan artist next to our booth and they were was it joe Were? i think it was yes they were the ones running running the pop-up show and they asked asked us to participate mm-hmm. so before i stayed in sweet place i i contacted a, an old friend from uni mm-hmm. and they gave me a place to crash my place the same weekend i went to the pop-up market and Oh my god, I'm so grateful for that day because I don't know if it, if it didn't work out, I don't know what I would have done. Mm-hmm. I made enough money to pay back the loan that my mom and Jemima had lent me. And it felt so good. So after the market, the next day, I sent back the money. I linked up with Swift mm-hmm. and he was traveling the same night to, to Kampala for a mural that he was working on. Mm-hmm. He sent he gave me the address and like yeah, I met up with his with his neighbor and he gave the key he, the key to his place and yeah, we le- we lived together for like a month plus. We had a show together, like we organized this the show. Exactly. This was a show at uh <laughs> Das Depot, a railway, Nairobi Railways. Yes. We set it up in one of the old wagons. And that was like one of the places where I met like so many artists. I've met so many artists in Europe than in any, any other. And Swift had so much connection, mm-hmm. like with other artists. So they all came. I think the, I mean, the most people who came for the exhibition were artists. Um, I met one fellow. So everything that was that was remaining, I took it around to galleries in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. One of them was Polka Dots, yes. They helped me sell a, a lot of my pieces. Yeah, and... and um, Another another person contacted. They saw my work at Polka Dot. I saw two works. In the event that he meant, actually, I'd gone to Mombasa. Mm-hmm. I went to Mombasa for for another pop up market mm-hmm. and and also an, another exhibition. And I saw zero mm. of all these events. And and then that, that collector like bought the two paintings. Just like that. Just like that. It was around the time that I was supposed to go to Kampala. One of the galleries I had emailed that had invited me for a workshop. And I didn't have like money for accommodation. So that payment was just like one of the most important ones. I was like two weeks late for the workshop because I, I was waiting for the exhibition I was doing in Mombasa to end. Mm-hmm. I was a little intimidated at first because uh, like it was like going to this group of artists like that seemed to do what they were doing and I was just this person who was two weeks late. <laughs> yeah, but then they seemed to like what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I met like three paintings mm-hmm. and two were selected for, for the exhibition that happened after the end of the workshop. Yeah, but then I had to go back to to I had to go to Shinyanka. Yeah, and I was I was working with a Canadian artist to make a mural. Not a mural a large painting for about a week and, and then and then come come to Kampala right away. I, I got back to Kampala on the same day that the exhibition was happening. We did the exhibition and uh, the response was good. So after the exhibition, because I didn't know like what was happening next, I went to Kigali, Rwanda mm-hmm. for, for some time. The gallery called me and they're like, you should come back should start working and i was like i was i was free such a bit because I, I had this notion of losing my freedom so yeah what is the blessing and curse of being under a gallery so before before i started working with the gallery mm-hmm. i didn't know there was uh, exclusivity i can't i can't make a painting and tell it to you like look here mm-hmm. do you want to buy this there has to be a proper channel everything goes through them I was afraid of that. I thought that I was, like, I was losing, I was gonna be lose my, my freedom. Uh, but then after working with the gallery, taking that leap and, and just deciding to try it out, mm-hmm. I think the exposure that I've gotten, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have gotten without the gallery. Maybe I would have gotten it, but way later, like way later, not as fast. The gallery has all these contacts that they have accumulated. Mm-hmm. Throughout the, their lifetime, database of collectors of of all these people who are interested in art. If, if the gallery really knows what it's doing and committed, 
to mm-hmm. taking artists out there that, that really helps because mm-hmm. I think art fairs art fairs are a great way of exposing artists because so many people and got like so many people visit them so you just, your exposure is like multiplied yeah so I, I was lucky like very lucky and also like the mentorship because um mm-hmm. just giving me insights like just like somebody who is experienced critiquing your work and that helps it just, it just it reduces your your meanders mm-hmm. when your friends are, are supportive but are, are not really from the art world it's hard to get like proper constructive criticism because for us we were like oh my gosh Sumi can paint you know and we would just say that all the time for every painting we were like oh my gosh this is even better than the last one and of course they are all beautiful and you're talented but you're right you have to surround yourself when you when you're trying to get ahead in your world and your skill it's great to surround yourself with professionals and people who obviously not people who are trying to make you into something else i, I also doubt that that's something that can happen with you because I, I know you're very strong-minded but you you also welcome some suggestions and it makes sense yeah so that has been quite helpful so for me um the downside which for me is not really much of a big deal mm-hmm. it's like of course you have to give a huge commission but I don't mind that because I would never have reached to the prices that I am at mm-hmm. now. So I think no problem for me. Carissa. And also, like taking away all, all the administrative part of the work, mm-hmm. now I just I just make art. I don't have to, of course I have to respond to a few people who email me directly, but mm-hmm. I even don't have to do that if I choose to. I just have to create. I have someone who helps me prime my canvas. Do you remember how in KK, I like, used to like <laughs> press the camera. Yeah, I used to do everything by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah like all that is done. Mm-hmm. I don't have to market my work. I don't have to. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things that I hated most. I don't think I'm a still a natural. Mm-hmm. So it was just very difficult to sell my work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so having other people do that really is a burden off my shoulders. But I, I'm sure you will. You're you're also learning how to speak more about your art. Exactly, getting words to to put into my art because the art lingo was just like too complex for me. It's still too complex, and you feel like it's snobbish at, like, at times. But those things are really good to practice at, and I think people don't they don't see the importance of sitting down and putting your work and your progress in words. Even if let's say you're just posting your pictures of your artwork and it's really good on Instagram, for example, but then someone very serious then wants to get in touch with you and to be with you and to directly contact you i mean i think they're going to ask you some of these technical questions and you kind of just need to be comfortable and used to to do yes. to talking about it to write to sending it in and it doesn't cost much like, i mean if you have instagram it means you can it means you have a smartphone and you can just practice on how to do like paragraphs of of your work and it means that you have internet access which means that you can google templates of how to mm-hmm. write about your artwork. It doesn't have and I think people then get scared. It's like, oh, it's too technical or must I must I do it in in English? And it's like, well, do it in Swahili, whatever. Do it in whatever language. And then, you know, yeah. someone then you can just ask someone to then translate it. It's not about the language. It's about like being able to properly phrase what it is that you you're doing. Exactly. I didn't know this, but as an artist and knowing is it what it is that you really want it, it just forces you to ask yourself these deep questions mm-hmm. you learn more about yourself yeah yeah that's good and it's maybe improving. in a month's time like when i keep practicing and asking myself more questions it, it will even be better exactly yeah. I mean, you... like just like you say like more practice i'm waiting in mm-hmm. so let's talk about the highlights of your time at, at the gallery in Kampala, Afiat, since then, the big exhibitions? Um, so, I just, I just did one exhibition, and that was uh, at the beginning, it was a group show, so, so all, all the artists mm-hmm. that are participating, we all did this one workshop, mm-hmm. surfaces, um, and then, after that, I've just been to art fairs, like the first one was the uh, Latitude in Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. 
and I've never felt so afraid. <laughs> it was just like, because uh, the gallery told me that, imagine, like every gallery picks up its best, 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 mm-hmm. and, and they bring them together. It's like competition. It's like, yeah. see good work there. Yeah. So, if, when you get good feedback there, then you know you're good. You're among the... Okay. So like you're surrounded by like one of the best like artists. So I was very nervous. I was like, what if nobody likes my work? Yeah. And like, I was more, I wasn't even more. Con- I was, I was concerned about how people will take yeah. like, this actual self. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like I was so relieved. As long as anyone told me that they liked the other piece. Yeah, it's such a new world, and you don't think you measure up. But of course the whole reason you're in Johannesburg is because you you measure up. You just say they, they are picking the best. Yeah, and they're sending them out there. So, but, but I do understand, like, it's because it's such a new world and it's like, uh, and I'm sure other artists were feeling the same way. I don't think you were alone. But of course, it's a huge uh, thing to be told, yeah, we're picking you for this. Yeah, sometimes it's when you're that nervous, you, you're kind of, you kind of forget what even being there just means even just being there means yeah. you know yeah okay and then you sold yeah. everything yes oh yes <laughs> on the opening night oh my god night, of course like, wow. oh my god i was like over the moon that was which year which which month was this was this last year right that, that was september 2019 yes yes I was so relieved, so happy. I've been, I've been accepted, which of course shouldn't matter because yeah. I'm an artist. Like if you make work that that works for you, then it doesn't matter. It's true. It's true. Wow. So. Because it's a step ahead. <laughs> Yeah, like by then, did you ever just stop and think, where would I be if I just stayed at KK Security, like in Arusha, chilling? I have no idea. Because that was the same year. I left on uh, February and that was in September. Like, yeah, it moved oh, so fast. Moved. Exactly. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be from KK to, to go out there. Exactly. Like, in, in less than a year. Um, just making that decision. Like, so that, 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 the tough decision to mm-hmm. get out of my comfort zone mm-hmm. and like go do shit. Mm-hmm. That was like, I'm, I've never been happier with a decision. Because you're also a very quiet person. Like, I remember, like, you, you used to just really enjoy me talking about your work at the show. It's, yeah. it, and and I know you wanted to, and it's not like you couldn't. But I think your your demeanor and your nature is really like a, you like producing and showing the work. But to talk more about it and to go out there and and uh, speak was not in your comfort zone. Now, of course, you're. That's out of my comfort zone. I wish I could just make paintings and not have to talk about them. <laughs> exactly. It's a big improvement that you, and this is why also I was just very proud because from a person who didn't want to talk about their paintings in Arusha is going to just go and sell their paintings alone where they'd have to talk about them in other countries, you know? Um, yeah. And I think then that just accelerated your confidence. It's like, it's like learning to swim by being pushed in the pool. Exactly. But I think the whole journey, like navigating my, my survival from Nairobi to Mombasa to Kampala, like I had to talk to people, make things happen on my own Mm -hmm. so i think that really (laughs) that's helped and this is like one of the questions that i I try to uh, to focus on how have uh, have you as an artist as made opportunities for yourself and not just waited for them to come because i think it's very important for emerging artists or artists who are maybe struggling on how to to f- and it's not that people are not doing it. It's just that I want to highlight, really love to highlight how the artists who are doing a good job or who are now out there doing their thing did it because they pushed themselves and they just created opportunities for themselves. Yeah. Even if it didn't pay, they stuck to their to their work, they stuck to working, they stuck to creating. Because of course you're not, of course you're then not an artist if you're not like you're not making the art. It's like you didn't wait for everything that you've painted to sell so that you can paint more. You just kept paint. You just, every day, yeah. when you finish one painting, you start another. And and it doesn't take, it's like the world is so connected. It doesn't take that much. It's just like going on the internet and emailing a bunch of people and just showing them yeah. your work. 
Um, yeah. The same bundle you would, you would spend on Instagram. Exactly. Yeah. Like even using Instagram. Okay, so maybe yeah. maybe some people don't have like a really quality camera to to take photos of uh, the high definition photos of their work. Which, by the way, I don't know. Like, there's so many photographers in Arusha, right? Like 15, 16 year olds who are in the road with really good camera cameras who you can i'm sure can you can just ask for them to take your artwork i don't think it's but anyways maybe people don't have that but they do have smartphones they have they have instagram pages and you can just there's so much and, and uh instagram is, is like one of the best platforms like for uh, at this era mm-hmm. you can be a, a successful artist whether you're independent or you're with gallery because exactly social media helps Mm-hmm. You just your work. Like you told me hashtags. <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah. It's like just do what you can. Mm-hmm. Just the little that you can. You never know who who on Instagram, what collection will 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 stumble into your work and like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So many things we can take advantage of. Even though your art is how I don't know. Like the chances the the, the more people out there see it. The chances of that one person who likes it is there. So just share it, share it, share it. Mm-hmm. And um, my next question would be, how do you think you've changed, like personally? What version of Sunki did you leave behind when you left? Mm, I think I was more playful. Playful? <laughs> I was more of a dreamer and less of a... Okay, as much as you think I did... I don't think <laughs> I did I did a hundred percent. Like planning it all and procrastinating. I don't know. My self discipline it, it still needs work but it, it, it's improved greatly, yeah. Yeah, I think I I work harder now. Like mm-hmm. I'm more happy. <laughs> so you thought you would you were procrastinating? But you still did it, you know, um, better late than never. I get what you're saying, though. I get what you're saying. And I think we all have this um, urge to, to, to be a little bit hard on ourselves. But, you like, yeah. whenever you take the action, it is early enough. Even if for you, you thought... Yeah, true. Um, true. Because, can you imagine, like, so what? You would want to have made it now? Would you even have made it now if you were still in Arusha? Maybe something would have exactly. come up. And yeah, so... Right there were valid things that were holding you back, you know? Yeah. So I think a lot of us were a little bit hard on ourselves. On, but I think you needed that time. I think you needed to... All those things that happened, happened, yeah. like, for a reason. Because maybe... Yeah. The, the, like, things just maybe wouldn't have aligned. Yeah. Um, as they did, had you done it, like, maybe a year before, maybe there wouldn't be these... Uh, art fairs and le- for example let's say you then did it now you wouldn't be able to travel now there's a lockdown so it's like what happened yeah, yeah. at that time yeah. was the exact right time for you to do things and it was early enough okay. yeah okay i take that back that, that was like actually yeah thinking about it yeah that was like no like <laughs> no i'm just I, i've had that before no i tell myself <laughs>
Yeah. So, yeah, it just forced me to think of myself first without rushing into putting money on big bad bed or mm-hmm. helping someone out or whatever. Of course, I, I have to I have to have a plan because I have to give up my, all my debts eventually. Yeah. But just pay them in, in, in a sustainable manner, like without hurting myself. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the most important. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned. So I've left behind the that part where like I don't care. I just have money and I, I spend it all and then I don't know what how I'm gonna survive in the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um how far along with your debts are you? Is it good? Is it it's pretty good. Um I would say I'm ninety percent. What? Done. No. Yeah. Really? Even the big one? Yes. Oh my god! When are we going to Madagascar? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had a plan. We had a plan. We were, we were going to the US this year, right? We had this grand dream. We were going to New York and LA and Las Vegas, right? We love that. Yeah, of course. So we can't do that. Um, the yeah, I still want to. If the situation eases up and things are good. Mm-hmm. I, maybe not as far as huh? it would be riskier, but. Yeah. yeah, just that's still the plan. Like traveling is, is still part of my plan. Mm-hmm. Just exploring. Uh, Zimb- I, I mean, I really want to, to see the Victoria Falls. No, that, that's like the top of the list. Either that, Zambia or Zimbabwe. Either that. Maybe Zambia so we can see manga. He said he's in Zambia, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, all this is, of course, dreams. It will be, it will be really nice. I really want to go to Rwanda and just see it. Yes, let's um, go to Rwanda. Yeah. Together. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's a really impressive place. And yeah, all the stories I hear from you, of course, I I heard from you. I really, really want to go to Rwanda. Um we were supposed to do a story this year. <laughs> yes. I was so ready. Are you working out? Well <clears throat> about that. <laughs> so I've been I tried. I tried. I was doing home videos. Um but you know, it hasn't been working out. But um, I've been buying my gear. <laughs> so <laughs> I have the shoes. I have like two pairs of shoes. I have my raincoats. I'm, uh, I'm trying to get a bag, like a waterproof bag. Slowly, slowly stacking up. I know I'll be fine. Um, uh, but I yeah. Have a whole bag of, like mountain gear, like for me, like ready, like any moment. Okay, like, good. Morning. We're on our way. Sorry. That's good. Yeah. yeah, so I have to just finish the stacking up. Um, when I am positive and sure of this, we're going to be climbing it. <laughs> then I'll start running. Um, but until then, I will be doing my best to keep active. I really try. I, like, I get this. I get energy, man. I get. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I will just tell... Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll just tell him, please, can you, can you, like, uh, help me with your tire? So, like, he has this Fuso tires. With the rim, eh? Yani, proper, proper. And I just yeah. want to, like, push this back and forth, doing exercise. And I would do it with so much force. After 24, like, after 48 hours, Apo, Labas Kumbini Tattoo, eh, I've forgotten it, Kabisa. Yani, I, Baga, the tires, they are being rained on. No one does anything. Sometimes I get, I'm like, today, today I'm going to go to Esami. Esami, which is in town. I go there, I run, I'm sweating, I'm feeling nice. Two days, I'm done. But I'm fasting now. So <laughs> I think it's helping me with my diet. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I was like, you know what? It's good because everyone in the house is fasting, right? So... It actually keeps me busy because I'm happy, like I'm here, I'm working, I'm not thinking about food until six. So after I got off the line with you, I just keep continuing editing, I'm online, I'm doing my things, I'm submitting things. And before you know it, it's time to break your fast. So I think it's good for me because before... Oh, fasting yeah, I'm fasting for Ramadan. Well, I'm fasting during Ramadan. I'm not actually doing it for, for Ramadan. Um, 
yeah, I'm just fasting with everyone in solidarity. Because also I think it's time for me to to bring my body back into a healthy pattern. And I think fasting is really good. Because I would just I would just eat all the time mungu wangu. Like because I would just come into town to do the uh, procurement errands for the school and to smile hapa like last time everyone is eating you're eating then after that you have as a ice cream ay 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 yeah we should do red sorry then we run back exactly i think that's a good plan yeah like they have it first and then to relax exactly i love your your relaxing tactics because sabu mimi my relaxing is not your relaxing sabu wewe you want a seven star hotel and uh <laughs> I guy bring you juice mimi i don't know but anyways so, <laughs> i want to be as stingy as possible um if if you can just camp somewhere in someone's yard it's fine oh my god no 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 <laughs> no of course i'm exaggerating but yeah i think you also taught me how to just be like treat to treat myself a little bit because i've been too hard on my on myself and the funny thing is that i'm so frugal with my money but it doesn't mean that i like spend it on anything important i all like at least used to i just i'm just stingy i know i i wouldn't spend money on like a night at a hotel but then i would go and buy some silly shit that maybe i wouldn't even use for <laughs> so i don't know what it is i can't reconcile the two I'm frugal but I'm also a, a vile spendthrift. Oh, like you'd bargain for a hundred. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I have a shit to discount on tomatoes. Oh, yeah. so. It's true. <laughs> Sometimes I walk away and I'm like, really Rukia, you had to bargain for that 100 100 shillings. My friend, 100 shillings for me is <laughs> like, mimi nikijua tu mtu anaongezea 100, I say, bala. But but like yeah, I can just pay an extra 5 10,000 that was really unnecessary for something um anyways i don't know humans are complex or oh, i'm just an idiot i don't know one of them um <laughs> so how are the how are the how are the sales going during the lockdown uh, i'm spending less because i used to go out like <laughs> several times a week yeah Mm-hmm. But you just find yourself like the basics. It's like you run out of food, you buy food, you run out of toilet paper, you buy toilet paper. That, mm-hmm. That's all. Mm-hmm. That's, you don't have to buy anything that you don't need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've been spending less. But also, um, at first I thought like nobody would be buying art at all. Mm-hmm. I thought like the world has changed and people will never buy art ever, that people will just buy food. Yeah, but uh, um, in the beginning, like, like when uh, when it all started, like when I was, it would be like a month, maybe three weeks back, when like everyone was talking about it. Mm-hmm. But the majority of people were in really fearful phase. Mm-hmm. After a few weeks, yeah, I'm still getting inquiries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think though I'll have like I'll still have an income. That's good. It's, yeah. you know when you're talking with other artists it's really tough on their side they're like yeah i'm just being on the phone with you so i be potassium that so i forget about eating because there's just no food oh, or like oh i know it, it's it's tough um so yeah but like i understand what you're saying because even for me I, i kind of felt how lucky i was because it just makes you realize like there's other artists who are like full full time and like a musician he, he, they are to- they are the first targets so like you can't do any shows public shows so i was i was yeah i was very sh- it made me just think like hearing from someone that i actually know how how bad it can be that someone is just eating once a day so that they can they can save as much the little money that they have and once that is over because it's going to be over because you're spending it um no matter how slowly so it's really serious huh? the world has changed in like two months it's just upside down for a lot of people which is yeah okay 
So, when Swiss Beats uh, bought your painting, <laughs> uh, how did that feel? Now, this is not to, to discredit any other patches that you've made, because I guess it's like the same money, <laughs> the same currency that they pay. But that might must have been such a big surprise. Oh my god, I cannot, I cannot describe this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On Instagram. Uh huh. It's like what? The hell? Yeah. I I remember sending a screenshot to my galleries and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> it's like, what do we do? How do you respond to me? Do you say sir, hello, or like? Yeah, I remember. I would have picked up. Uh, just respond normally, like like usually. Too. Yeah, of course. And of course he does, right? But he might speak. Yeah. Fr- he might start speaking French. What do I do? That's a unge kuchana nae, unge zinia. If that's just a DM. Yeah, exactly. I try to be calm. Mm-hmm. I was probably like a professional. Mm-hmm. I'm actually very proud of myself. I was like screaming and everything on the outside, but yeah, my best is just. Yeah, he asked me to send a picture of what I had left. I sent it and it was just like sold. Wow. Like oh my god. Yeah. It's now hanging in his um gallery, right? Because he's collecting these. He's... Yeah, it's called the Dean Collection. So the Dean Collection, yes. Yeah. I don't know where it's hanging, mm-hmm. but I, I know it's, it's in that collection. Wow. Yeah. I mean. That, that, that was just like, I still don't believe it sometimes. I'm just like, did that happen? Exactly. I remember crying, like calling you and crying. And going, yes. and going, did Swiss Beats just buy your painting? And you were like, yes. And I I think by that time you had calmed down, but I hadn't. Like I had just had the news and I was... Yes. Oh my God. It, it all just started coming back, like you being here and fighting for like to get out of your job and then you finally getting out and like all those times when you were down on yourself and but you kept going and then you left. It's just like all these things accumulating to that moment of like someone being yeah. noticing your your artwork and of course again not to discredit everyone else who don't do your work but this is a huge step yeah so that that's all that came and then i remember our team was just going why are you crying like you know even jerogi was like no why are you crying like because it was just such an emotional wreck that day i just remember it all the times i was i was so inspired and, and proud and happy and then i remember i called your mom Yes. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. But then, uh, so my mom calls me and she's like, people are calling me. It's Rukia. Rukia. I mean, if we get that, yes. <laughs> Did she say that I was. Yes. <laughs> she's like, who's his nanny? She's like, who's his bitch, my nanny? Out of the gallery, right? Uh, I didn't leave the like I had a studio there. Yeah, so you're no longer uh, your studio is no longer there. Yes, um, because there, there, there are people coming for like a residency program. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just thought I should make room for more artists, mm-hmm. give them the opportunity that was given to me. And I also can paint again from home, just like in Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Do you ever think you will start your own gallery? Are you looking into that now? Um, not anymore. I used to think that I would like to own a gallery, but mm-hmm. I don't want to do anymore. You saw the, the work that goes into it.
Mm-hmm. But I think I want to maybe do a space where I can encourage other artists to, to create, but right. not much, much of a gallery. I've been eyeing this place in Arusha for so long. I think it used to be like a like a flower factory. Long time ago, and this guy keeps lowering the rent. And we, uh, but I, I've told you about this, I think, no? The one in Sakina. Yes, yes, you have. Exactly. And I've been picturing it being this place with um, with creatives and but also that like people only know Nafasi, like the only art space. Exactly, and it's it's doing a great job. But I think it's time we expand on that and make Tanzania have more entities like for, for creatives and, and not just for Tanzanian creatives, it's it, an East African African um, it's because we have so much space here. That's this is what I'm thinking. Like compared to that, I just feel like there's just space. I mean, it's like it would be the perfect creative joint, you know. But also the place in Sakina, it it was like an old flower factory, and it's like by the road. It's excluded a little bit more. I've always thought about a residency. I mean, ever since I went to Ghana and I met Vabene, the artist, um, I was so inspired by what she's doing, and. I see the importance of the conversations that come um, between African artists and just but but just creating spaces that offer those conversations because yeah so this idea rose from a residency and so many other ideas and just all these conversations and just like understanding how for example West Africa functions differently from East Africa not even just at an art level but just as a life general like a yeah. different life level. Yeah. And then you take that back home with you and you function differently. And that all rises from like meeting these creative minds and and at residencies and being given tasks together. And I think I think I just want to establish an art residency here, you know? Yeah, it's one well, of my ideas. Just together. <laughs> exactly. Finally. I've been begging you. I've been I've been asking you like Sungi, can we do this together? And you're always, I know, you're always telling me, I don't think friends should do business together. <laughs> and I understand. But I think for this particular idea, it would be really great to start something yeah. here. Um, to bring it, to bring sort of like a lively, recurrent thing in Arusha, but also just you have a rise in ideas and different people. Because it's such a, hub you know it's just like nairobi so many people come here um, but i just want a permanent or like sort of something that runs maybe even yes. like six months out of the year where people just are situated here and and you do these creative things yeah it you could can be something from scratch you can yeah exactly you can build something from scratch and and i think artists are so so um happy to hear that they can go to another country and just create you know um yeah, and then you know, from the business business part aspect of it, maybe it can be an Airbnb. I don't know. I mean, of course, with Corona, we don't know what's gonna happen. But like, I've, I mean, I've just been thinking about it so much. I think about it all the time, like resi- starting a residency. But anyways, one thing at a time. I'm already doing the street art project. Let that finish, and then I can worry about other things. Yeah. And when do you plan on coming home, by the way? To do us. <laughs> <laughs> to see me <laughs> no it's okay you came for your birthday that was really nice that was really cool i came in december too you don't remember no you didn't the last time was on your birthday oh my god i don't believe you <laughs> so gay the last time i saw you was on your birthday oh my birthday. god what did we do okay Tell me what we did in December. December? December. First, you had gone, to, you were not, you were not there, you were getting a passport from there. You came late. You phoned me. The first night we went to, to the chicken place. Aha. Uh-huh. And I... then we went to, we spent the night, we went to Garamtoni, then the next day we went to Laro. Ah, yes, yes, you're right. That was not the same time as your birthday? Okay. No, my birthday. <laughs> right sorry i kind of like put all that together yes you're right you came you went to laroi you slept in laroi the room was so dusty and i was like oh my gosh 
we are back to this dust allergies um <laughs> that was fun you're right talking about friendships so you you get very busy you get very i mean you used to tell me that you would set an alarm so you can stop painting not start painting but stop painting <laughs> and i was like okay she is busier than <laughs> she's ever been and of course that made it that i i you know we couldn't talk as much and sometimes i just felt really bad i felt like okay and you know how i overreact and overthink right so i'm like okay Sugi's not my friend anymore like yeah she's just like a person i used to know and she's just like in a different world and that's fine and then of course that would change when we actually do talk um and you just kind of understand yeah. that like okay it's a different time she's at a different pace at a different schedule at a different demand for her work she and this is what we were wanting like this is what you wanted right like this yeah. is what we were so i had to like kind of come and you would come me down also like with the talking yeah. and just be like yeah that's it's it's not what it is and so and and you would also admit that like yes i've been dismissive or i've been i haven't i've just forgotten yeah. and and it doesn't mean this or that it just yeah i i knew it was for real when i was telling you about hanging out with another person and you were just like i just wish you could tell me those things and you could it was me there or something like this and i was like okay and it's the same thing it's the same thing that i feel when i hear about like you hanging out with other people which is really interesting you just get jealous and you're like bitch but it's okay <laughs> i think it's uh and it just reminded me that i don't think you have to spend all the time i think it's just yeah. keeping up the communication and reaffirming that like listen we are good i don't know maybe it's just not adults of me i just feel the need to address that and like talk about it because i have like a like a weird feeling when i feel like okay maybe something that was really good isn't good anymore i like talking about it and being reassured yeah. and that's just such a childish mentality i think but i think you just no no mm-hmm. it's important because i think if you if, if we have doubts and then they're not addressed and then like they accumulate eventually we can leave them mm-hmm. yeah so so that was a th- that was an interesting one but I, i'm very appreciative of how like yeah you explain things and you and you get it Oh, we were supposed to we were supposed to do all the side hustles oh. until now. Well, you you can start with your side hustles. Where are we starting with? Like what's the title like? Straight fresh out of university. <laughs> okay. Do you know I went to a photography course? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I tried being a videographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And what was it called? Uh, it was called Rangi Rangi. Uh, and then I uh, I tried mushroom, growing mushroom at the desert. Oh, really? In Garantoni with my mom. Yes. Uh, and then I tried herbs. Mm-hmm. I tried farming in Duruma, mm-hmm. which was like, like the source of all my travels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, oh my god. What happened actually? So you... They they stole from you or something. Uh, oh my god! Yes, the people I paid to drill a borehole. Mm-hmm. I kept giving giving them money. Like then then when I eventually went to see that hole, it was like exactly <laughs> like one meter. <laughs> oh my god! And they had disappeared, right? Yes, they disappeared. Oh my I even got the police involved. Yeah. But then I ended up like spending more money with the police. <laughs> So, and what were you trying to farm there? Vegetables, I think. Okay. So you can supply them for business. So that was the first, so that was the first farm. And then I, did, I tried the second farm. Mm-hmm. I tried to grow herbs and stuff. But yeah, it, it also didn't work out. Uh, yeah, I tried selling books. I 
You tried to sell what? Milk? The books, the books. The oh, books. yeah, books, yes. Yeah, I think those are the ones that I remember. I tried, I tried uh, network marketing. I was in Oriflame, that was in GNLD. Mm-hmm. You also bought um, yes. the coins. Or- Onyx coins. Onyx, yes, those ones. Uh, how did that work out? Was it was it a good investment? Uh, no, people are demanding for their money now. I don't know how it's gonna work. All the promises that we were told, nothing has happened so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so was I t- I did currency trading, mm-hmm. but that I think um I, I think I'm, I'm still giving it a try. Of course, I I haven't had the time, but I think I'll get back into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but those are the 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 aspects that I remember. So fresh out of university, I started the, the school program where that's when we met because of the book. But I don't think that was a side hustle because I wasn't really getting paid something to to live off. But I think I think the biggest and the ongoing and the first was the Annoying Artist. Because immediately I finished with the school program, I just went straight out to Annoying Artist. And I just had no clue. I mean, I paid 64,000 Tanzanian shillings for five posters. You remember this, right? I still have the receipt. Yeah. I mean, I did no shit. I I mean, sixty four thousand was what I would use later for like posters, flyers. Like sixty four thousand would would be the advertising money like put aside for three four months worth of advertising, right? But of course, I did not know. So I just got and 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 also in the beginning, I was less sure of my stance on things and I, and I thought I would I have to sort of like suck up and go with the first suggestion like I wouldn't do any surveying and of course I had just also just come back to Arusha I didn't know where a lot of things were I found these people who make posters but they're like a company that prints for Coca-Cola and stuff it's cheaper if you take maybe 2,000 flyers right so I only wanted five and they just told me their price and I was like, yeah, okay. And in the back of my head, I knew it was really expensive and that, like, where am I going to get that money? But there's something in me that couldn't say no. Um, it was a sister-run company, so it was, like, two sisters running it. And I just fell into the trap. I sold scrap metal. So I, t- I advertised on Arusha Mailing that I'm looking for, use like, scrap for for like uh, an idea or something in my head i i wanted to make some sort of installation or whatnot actually it, it started with bottles i was collecting bottles like wine bottles and glass i got such a huge response because of course there's just jars and things everywhere i, I think what it was was someone then contacted me and told me are you also coll- collecting scrap metal i have these broken down fridges and washing machines and things like that i don't know where to put them and again didn't know how to say no uh and this guy was just contacting me on email like i didn't even have to reply that's how bad i was with my like saying no and i was like yeah sure so the next thing you know at bamdogos there's like washing machines and and fridges and these like old copper things many are like a lot and I didn't know what to do with them. So I just went and sold it at scrap in the middle of town, Uko. So I leave Uko. So guess what I got? I got 70,000. Okay? I paid 64 for five posters. Which means that I was left. <laughs> I mean, I was left 6,000. I mean, of course, I had a little bit of cash somewhere else. I mean, it was not smart to use a huge percentage of it. So, was it 70,000 or 170,000? Actually, I think it was... No, I think it was 70,000. No, yeah, it was 70. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, yeah, so I spent that money foolishly. And then later, my sister was like, just go to Quick Printers. I mean, 64,000 is four months worth of supply for that. And I was like, what? So I went to Quick Printers. And of course, I felt so conned. I'm sure I felt so stupid. I was like, these women felt that I was the stupidest person they ever met to pay that amount of money. And then the poster was so many words. 
oh my gosh i didn't know canva by then so i was like it just i said everything on the poster like i said every, like i wrote paragraphs and paragraphs instead of just making it really easy and just like say time place and what it is about and like it was such a small font it wasn't aligned and it was just a disaster and that poster is it's yeah. like smiley faces no actually oh my gosh then i had to pay forty thousand for the poster i think for the poster design because i think oh my gosh yeah actually i didn't do the actual designs because yeah i couldn't afford to get the non-watermark uh templates of the internet and i, I don't even know which part of the internet yeah. i was googling because i was just i was just not asking around i was just so hard-headed and so i just trusted the same people who charged me sixty four thousand for five posters to also make the poster for me and i just give them all the content and they were just listening to me they didn't advise me or anything i i, I even <laughs> even thinking about it now makes me feel so stupid anyways short story is that <laughs> it's okay you can laugh at me yeah so short, short story is that i spent way too much money i advertised for this thing it was in april i brought in my own tent i set it up it rained so badly the tent collapsed i know exactly and you're the only person who showed up um and i was like okay so wasted money didn't bring it back i was so naive you know i didn't plan of course so just to mention also the, the readers so of course i had invited people to come and read stories other people have read like i didn't know actually what the annoying artist was about at that time i just knew that i wanted to share my stuff and invite other people to share theirs and Debbie, I remember, who used to live here, she came. She was one of the readers in the rain, cycling. And then I think there was one more person. I don't know. I don't remember. But um, there was one more I person. Remember, I remember Quinn. Quinn? Liz. Liz. Yes, and Liz. You're right. Yeah. And so there were performers. And you came to like <laughs> support me and be yeah. the audience. Yeah, it just didn't happen. But somehow, I just said, oh, okay. I'll just shift it to June. I was like... I don't know where I was getting this money. I really don't remember. But um, it was after Moshono, right? It was after the school. So I think I had some some from after the job. And so, yeah, anyways, we started that. Um, th- then, yeah, then I waited in June and then when Artist was born and it just kind of slowly became whatever it, it is. And it continues to change. It's just about everything. It's really just yeah. me doing different projects every month and or every year or anyway so the annoying artist is like the fast fast side hustle but with the with the annoying artist came all these other things mm-hmm. and i i sold uh second hand clothing yeah. yeah which was so awesome it was actually very it was a learning experience it got congested really really fast and i had to move out but but at least I did it. And I just continued selling at, at the farmer's market. With that, I was doing the annoying artist. And as it caught up, um, people were telling me, like Freddie and Harley Selassie were telling me, you, know, you should come and maybe we could make something out of this space. So I had less time with them, Tumba. So I left that. Well, I was emotional teaching for two months. Then I left. Then I went to Ibuka. And I stayed there for, was it three months? Maybe three months. What else did I do? Is that it? No, I've done other things. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I sold, I tried, so when the plastic ban was up, I, see, I told you this story, I told you, it was, it happened during your birthday when you came to uh, July last year. Peter, oh, yeah. yeah, Peter was selling um, the, the bags and he had given me, there was a guy who called me, the guy from my boobs, like the guy, my boobs is where we eat what happened he told me that he wanted 20 bags right because i was going around saying okay i have bags and i was gonna get a commission on it so i called peter no i I forget about it and then i text peter i'm like oh i forgot to tell you that there's a guy who ordered 20 bags so he calls me and we were having we were were having the dinner uh for your birthday yeah and and he's screaming and he's like uh rukia you only someone wants 20 bags and you didn't call me what, what, what's that call the guy call back the, did you call the guy i was like um no and then and so i call back the guy <laughs> so i i text peter after calling the guy and i'm like okay 
the guy has sent me money, I will, I'll send you the money tomorrow. So, he was telling me that day, alifungua whiskey. Yeah, he sat on his balcony. He was so happy. He was like, "Get you, get you, and no one He was, he thought he was going to be rich. Kumbe, he thought that I sold twenty bags of like a thousand pieces each. Mimi, I was telling him I sold twenty pieces, like twenty pieces, but they are bags, right? They are bags. So me, I said bags. Him, he thought this guy ordered twenty bags and has already paid. Yeah, exactly. But like 20,000 bags. So he, he thought he was rich. And he thought he was just going to give me my 2 million. <laughs> and then, and then we'll be on our way. So in the morning, I sent him his 20,000. <laughs> and then he calls me humble. He was so soft. He was like, I'm sorry I shot. <laughs> he was like, I'm so sorry I shouted. Kumbe, it was 20 bags. I was like, Peter, you thought I had you thought I had 20 million for you or something. And I was like, look here, Mimi, I was ready to buy a car. I knew my business, my life was looking good. Yesterday I drank whiskey. I sat at the balcony without my shirt. I was happy. I was like, life is really coming together. <laughs> Rukuki has really helped me in my life. <laughs> Kumbe, Nempa F. I remember we met the next day at Africa. Yes. I was dying. Those are the only ones I sold. I sold like, I don't know, 10 bags for 2,000 each. At some point, I just returned the bags and I was like, I think, I think we just have to find someone else. I think it's okay. And then, what other side job did I do? I think those are the only ones, actually. This one, Mka. Mka? Yes. You're coming from down. <laughs> yeah, but that was like a spontaneous idea. Yeah, I was coming from down. I was like, anyway, I can just buy all this charcoal and sell it for a bigger price because charcoal is very um cheap on the roadside huh? I love uku. uku is very expensive so yeah i was thinking about that yeah so i bought him car but then i came and then i just i don't know who i ended up giving it to or something i didn't buy that much but i don't know i just changed my mind like that which is so sometimes it's 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 detrimental to my functioning yesterday when i was talking to my mp i was telling him like i feel like I feel good about having so many ideas and like being able to execute them but sometimes I feel like it's not getting me anywhere like I'm not sticking to one thing it is a fact <laughs> yes uh, yeah and, and sometimes I don't know how to tell you this yeah, yeah like, exactly because you're in such a high mood and like, yeah. I feel like I'll hurt you or something yeah. but yeah it's a fact yeah I think of a lot of stuff but I I don't know how to how to not do those things. Like for me, I just feel like I must. Do you get what I mean? I don't know. Like uh, um, you, you, you don't have to dismiss the ideas. You can write them down. Mm-hmm. And just, I think just writing them down. You know that there's always this idea that I can come back to when I at the most appropriate time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I always <laughs> feel like if not now, then when? Even with this podcast. I, I texted you like what two days ago and I was like I'm gonna do a po- yeah. I'm gonna do a podcast and so I'm just gonna interview everyone and then put it out there and that's it now it takes it's obviously time consuming so everything else has kind of stopped I was writing of course I finished writing and I submitted but there was a second thing that I was writing but this idea came on so I just kind of have to do that and I just feel like I have to. Like if you see we're doing it now and that's satisfying me. And so that then reinforces the fact that the next time I get another idea, I'll have to do it because then I'll just get satisfied for fulfilling that idea. I think it this also depends on the nature of the idea. Like of course this is this you can do it like at any time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't involve any expenses. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe a little bit of that. Yeah. But that's all. But like some ideas can be more risky. Like they go for maybe money. Yeah. Yeah, and like you have to give up more for them, and then they don't work out, or they take so much time off of your the main thing that you're doing. Like it can be just like that. And, and like the most hard to achieve ideas, they automatically always just fall, like sort of fade away in the background. Anyways, I mean, I, I still have the enthusiasm for doing them, but this, 
I think I'm not hesitant to express that I want to do them, but like in reality, because of what you've said, like that they're just not plausible at the time or whatnot, they just fade away themselves really. Because I can only manage what's easy for me, you know? Um, yeah. Like what's the one thing you hesitated to tell me about because I was in such a high mood and I was telling you an idea and you're just like, oh my God, not again. Which one? Uh, that was like when you wanted to do the bracelets, the drink thing. Oh my gosh. Yes. We are going to, to something. I don't know. Really <laughs> yeah. It was called a uh, bubble tea. Bo- boba. Bubble tea. Boba, yeah. I wanted to start a bubble tea business. Like I wanted to build a small um bajaji in and turn it into like a, a mobile bubble tea stop in Dar es Salaam and Arusha. And I don't know how I was going to do that. Um which what was the bracelet one? Uh, no, no, no bracelet. Um the, the leather thing. I think the leather thing is uh is more practical, but like you doing them at the same time and like I was mm-hmm. I wasn't sure. Yeah. You mean the the one out of the tire tubes? Yes. Ah, okay. Then I and I told you and I called up and I was like, You should get me tire tubes from Uganda. I think you should just like Uganda. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and were you one time. Just one time. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just like I think yeah. I, I think later you told me like what you, you are going to finish all the tires in Arusha, Javan. Like, you're already thinking you want to import tires to make wallets from Uganda. Just, and it's true. It's like, it's not like I was going to finish all the tire tubes here. But I, I went on with the project and I think, I think it was really nice. And I, st- I still remain with the um, bags and the wallets at home. And I kind of like having, seeing like all the things that I experimented on and made. Because later on, I can just give them as gifts or like put them up and say, you know, I had made this at a certain time. But yeah, I had a lot of energy. I used to go to Moshi. Like I went to Moshi and got um, tire tubes um, because they were cheaper there. And and I went around so much looking for the fundies who had the proper um, machine yeah, to do the stitching, you know, because not, not, not every... Not, not every machine, like not every Cheriani can, can shona the thing. Eh? So, but then very few people have had those tail, nani, what are they called? Sewing machines, yeah. Sewing machines. Um, and it was a lot of energy. And I definitely didn't get that money back. But at least I experienced like making it and all these suggestions and all that. I have a lot of stuff like that at home. Of things that I, just like things that I wanted to make and tried, and it's okay. On to the next thing. I just I, I'm kind of just scared though. Is it gonna go anywhere? Like, I want to be a paid creative. Right now, I'm not a paid creative. Sometimes I worry that like how long is it gonna be me putting projects out that are not might not necessarily be bringing me a living. Like, like ten years from now, still doing this. And not really actually have having established myself and like gotten a return from it. I ask myself that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to figure out like a strategy where mm-hmm. you get an income from all this because you deserve the like you put in the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to. And like what about your collection of monologues? What what to publish them? My collection of monologues, yeah. So I'm writing yeah, I want, but you remember we had this agreement that we we're going to write our books, right? This year or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> that sound is not yeah. promising. Um, well, I've started already, so. Yes. Yeah. I just found out that I'm really good at short stories. I can't go longer because I just, I have this idea and I know how it's going to start and oh end. Oh my God, I can, I can totally relate. But yeah. I was also told of how, because I thought I'd write like a novel. No, exactly. It's true. I think, I think it's a, it's a thing. You're wired differently. I think there are people who are able to carry on for pages and pages. Like, and I found this out when I was writing a film. So I was writing a script, right? The general rule is that 
once one page of a script translates to one minute on screen on the on the actual film and so 60 pages is 60 minutes so they recommend that you write like 85 pages to 90 pages in case of there's any edits it will still be around one hour and i tried to write a feature film but I couldn't add anything. I put everything down that I wanted to do. I structured the story. I wrote the thing and it came to 40 pages, right? There's no way I could add that. There's nothing else I could, I couldn't add anything. That's, that's, yeah. Like I couldn't add anything to the character. I couldn't add anything to the backstory. I was putting myself pressure that, no, you have to write a feature film. You set out to write a feature film. So, so I would just delay things and be like, well, I'm not finished yet. But really, I was finished. Like, my story was finished. And it's just shorter than a feature film, but it can just be a short film. That's when I found out, like, I think I'm just a short storyteller. So I said, okay, I'm just going to do a collection of short stories. And so, yeah, I don't know how many short stories are going to be. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. your book is going to be a best of I, I am sure of it. Oh. I, I swear, like, because I feel so entertained. Yeah. And it's so relatable. Man, thank you. Yeah, I think do it as, as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. And the waiting is not put any self doubt, like, you shouldn't have any trust. Maybe it should be a bit technical stuff. Maybe, like, the uh, delay isn't happening, but other than that, yeah. I think it should be up like, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I'm also really hungry. <laughs> It's, we've been speaking. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fasting. This is the time now people start getting tired in the conversation. Thanks, God. <laughs> Please don't make me laugh. What was another thing? Thumpsing. This this was thumpsing. This was thumpsing. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways. Thank you so much. Like, this was so much fun. It was just as I anticipated, expected. Thanks, man. This was something. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Something, something.